Okay, there we go. So again, welcome everybody. We are looking at why I hate your life. Our Bible study tonight is in John chapter 12. It's verses 20 through 50, and we have a lot of ground to cover. Um, but tonight, before we get into um, our passage, I wanted to just share this little story with you, this little thought. Um, there, there's this church, it's called, uh, it's called the Church of the Open Door, and it was in downtown Los Angeles. And, and I was told, and I heard that if you stood behind the pulpit, you looked out into this massive auditorium. I mean, I mean this is a huge church. Um, and, and it had a, a, a first floor, and then it had a large balcony, and it even had a second balcony. I mean, this was just like cathedral status. Uh, I mean, it was just kind of a, this really huge church. Uh, but then, <laughs> and, and, and you could get a sense of importance, you know, standing up there in this big church, and you have, you know, all these people uh, there listening to you speak. And then there was a little plaque on the pulpit that was there to just kind of put a person's, you know, ego in check. And um, if you were to stand there in the pulpit, looking down and looking down and looking out over this massive congregation, there was a little plaque on the pulpit. And, and the plaque was from uh, John 12, and it's 21. And it says, sir, we wish to see Jesus. Um, and, and the point being, people didn't come there. They don't come there to see you. When people come to church, they don't come to church to see me. They don't come, uh, you know, we fellowship. and we. But really, what we do is we come to church because we want to see Jesus. Um, as a matter of fact, God has put this God-sized hole in every heart. And, uh, you know, churches that grow understand the importance of meeting the need for people to come and encounter Jesus. And the question in part I wanted to ask tonight, and I'm going to be asking this a little later on, so I want you to think about it. And that is when people come to our church, our churches, what will they see? What will they find? And if they find Jesus, what difference does seeing Jesus in all his glory make? What difference does it make to our lives? So again, it's John chapter 12, verses 20 through 50. Next week, we're going to cover the entire chapter of John 13. But tonight, we're going to finish out chapter 12, it's verses 20 through 50. I want to have a word of prayer, and again, I want to welcome the folks who are with me here on Zoom. I'm going to be asking you to grab a couple of verses each. We're going to read through that, but first, let's ask for the Holy Spirit to be with us for this study. Father God in heaven, Lord, we want to see Jesus, mm -hmm. and that's, that's why we call this Lord Encounter Bible Study. We're not here to encounter any individual or any person. We're here to encounter Jesus through the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And Father, we know that we can't encounter Christ without encountering you, which is part of Jesus' point here tonight. True. Lord, we want to encounter you. We want, we want to see Jesus and to see you in your glory. Lord, we want to be changed by that encounter. We want to be like the Greeks. We're here to see Jesus. Holy Spirit, we don't do that on our own. And we know that whenever we come together in Jesus' name to get into the word, you are here. You're ready to pour out blessing and, and revelation. And that's what we pray for tonight, revelation. Help us to find Jesus. This is the year we want to be closer to him and praying that you would be a part of that journey. Holy Spirit, be our teacher tonight. Open the word to us and open our hearts and minds. And in a way that we do see Jesus and hunger for him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Again, we have some 30 verses to cover tonight. Next week it'll be another 30, 31. But tonight we have 30 verses each. I'm, I'm seeing there's a few of us here. If you'd be willing to volunteer to read, let's say, four verses each. I'm sure we can get get through this. And hi, Debbie, good to see you on Facebook as well and other people who are there. But folks, please grab your Bibles. If you would volunteer to read, that would be helpful. Again, nobody has to. Just asking if you would be willing. Again, let's grab four verses each. We're going to start in verse 20 
and then we're going to read through to verse 50. If somebody could start us, please. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came therefore to Philip, which was the Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip comes and tells Andrew, and again Andrew and Philip tell Jesus. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come, and the Son of man should be glorified. Verify, verify, mm. I say to you. Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abides alone. But if it die, it bring forth much fruit. Okay. If somebody could read the next four verses, starting at 25. Um, he loves, he that loves his life shall lose it. And he that hates his life in this world shall keep it to life eternal. Mm. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Mm. Now is my soul troubled, and that sh uh, shall I say. Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. Mm. Okay. Amen. Verse 29, somebody. Therefore, the people who stood by and heard it said that it had thundered. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, this voice did not come because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. And I, if I am lifted up from the earth, mm will draw all peoples to myself. This he said, signifying by what death he would die. Mm. Okay. Uh, verse 34. The people answered him, we have heard out of the law that Christ abided forever. How sayest thou, the son of man must be lifted up? is this son of man then jesus said unto them yet a little while is the light with you to walk while ye have the light lest darkness come upon you for he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth while ye have light believe in the light that ye may be the children of light these things spake jesus and departed and did hide himself from them but though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. Mm. Okay. Uh, verse 38. That the word of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spoke. Mm. Lord, who has believed our report? And to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore, they cannot believe, because Isaiah said again, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts, lest they should see with their eyes, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. These things Isaiah said when he saw his glory and spoke of him. Okay. Um, verse 42. Nevertheless, even among the rulers, many believed in him, but because of the Pharisees that did not confess him, lest they should be put out of the synagogue. For they loved the praise of men more than the praise of God. Then Jesus cried out and said, He who believes in me, believes not in me, but in him who sent me. And he who sees me, sees him who sent me. I have come as a light into the world, that whoever believes in me should not abide in darkness. Mm. Mm, I like that. And anybody else? And if everyone hears my word and does not believe, I do not judge him. 
Mm. Or I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. He who rejects me and does not receive my word has that which judge him. The word that has spoken will judge in the last day. But I have not spoken of my own authority, but for the Father who sent me a command. What I shall say and what I shall speak. I know that his command is everlasting life. Mm. Therefore, whatever I speak, just as the Father has told me, so I speak. Okay, there are a lot. There's a lot of passages there. There's a lot in this. Um, any questions, comments, anything that stood out for you in this passage tonight? Uh, and again, for the folks on Facebook, please feel free to share. I love your comments, your insights. I want to hear from you as well. Uh, again, any questions or comments? They were hard-hearted. Mm. They did not believe in him, even what he had seen. And he said that he didn't come, the word is not going to judge them, but he came for the word. Meaning that when he died, it was not for a certain amount of people, but for everyone. Okay. To me stood out that we have to know the word. Everything okay. that is written, every word has a purpose to be there and we should know it very well because it's written for us, for our salvation. From the commandments to the simple testimonies of everyone that wrote something to, to conquer our faith. Okay, I like that. Anybody else? Uh, the Pharisees intimidated the follower of Jesus. That's why many of them didn't believe in him. Ah. Okay. Any other thoughts? I think um, maybe to that thought that many of the many of those who followed or who said they followed Jesus, uh, I would say they followed him, but not wholeheartedly. Because if they did, they would have they would have been willing, like the disciples, to give up what they were doing and follow Jesus. Mm, Adam, I like that. Mm -hmm. I like those thoughts. Absolutely. He also said that um, he reminds me of John the Baptist, who said that he, John the Baptist, must decrease and Jesus would increase. And Jesus is saying that he is decreased, mm -hmm. similar to what John the Baptist said, because his father is the one who increases. In other words, he said, and that comes from 49 and 50. He doesn't speak his mm -hmm. own words at all, but he speaks the word of his father, which who sent him and he said whatever the father tells him he knows it is life everlasting because the father sent him and whatever he says to him to speak so he will speak mm. now isn't it interesting that jesus who in eternity past equal to the father to whom all authority is given to mm -hmm. whom judgment is given his mm -hmm. goal is i'm going to make dad bigger than me um, and, and Debbie, I like your thought. Always walk in his light. I, I, I love that. Um, any other thoughts? Let me start by asking a couple of questions. I, I wanted to ask in this story, oh, who are the Greeks and what were they doing in Jerusalem during Passover? I, I mean, Passover was strictly for the Jews. And, you know, if you weren't a Jew, you couldn't get close to Jerusalem, like, or the temple during this time. So who, who do, like, I, how do, yeah, I wasn't expecting Greeks to show up in this story. Who were they? What do you think they were doing there? Where did they come from? They were converts. Oh, they were converts? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are they selling goods? Possibly selling goods. There's a million extra Jews in Jerusalem. Could be a good time to make a sale. Yeah. They said that they came to see who this Jesus is. Mm. And when they said that, Philip went and told Andrew, and Andrew went and told Philip, and Philip went and told Jesus that they've got some Greeks here who wants to know who he is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, one of the things that would want you to understand is that the Jerusalem Jews were snobs. Ooh. If you weren't a Jerusalem Jew, you were sub-Jew. 
<laughs> you you had the Nazarene Jews, and there was nothing good that came out of out of out of Nazareth. If you came out of Galilee, you were an ignorant fisherman. I, I mean, the best Jews were the Jews in Jerusalem. So imagine how they treated Jews who came from other countries, right? Because you could have been um, the Greek Jews could have been Jews who during the exile had been moved all over the world, right? So you could have had. Uh, Ethiopian Jews, you could have had Greek Jews, you could have had Roman Jews like Paul, uh, but you weren't a true Jew or a measured up Jew um, unless you actually came from Jerusalem. Certainly it had to be born in Israel. And they had a little bit of an attitude about Jews who came from other parts of the world. And so some of them could have been converts to Judaism. Um, they could have been, again, Jews who came from, you know, they were born and raised in other parts of the world, and they were coming to Jerusalem to participate in Passover. What, what I find interesting is, is that regardless as to whether or not they were converts um, or they were Jews who were raised in other countries, their passion, their interest is Jesus uh, based on reputation. Um, for those who are just joining us, we are in John chapter 12. We're going through verses 20 through 50. So again, we have, we have these Greeks showing up. And, and, you know, whenever you have people from out of town showing up and, and, and they start asking about Jesus, it gets people's attention. And so it's not uncommon. I think about uh, Pentecost how there were 3,000 people there. Um, there were 3,000 um, who were, they were all Jews. They were there for, um, you know, Pentecost, and they all heard the gospel in their different languages. So it wasn't uncommon for Jews who were raised in other parts of the world to come to Jerusalem to be a part of Passover. I, I just find it interesting that they don't call them Jews. They call them Greeks, which just shows the spirit of division that, that you know, um, existed amongst even the Jews themselves, which is why Jesus moves from that system to the church, where in the church there's supposed to be no Greeks or Jews. Now we're all one in Christ Jesus. This is why God had, which is why when somebody goes back to, you know, God blessing Israel and Israel's God's people, I go, no, 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 no. God's people are one in Christ Jesus. Amen. So the Greeks show up. What's the request? And why is it significant? They want to see Jesus. Yep. Okay. So they want. So what's so significant about that? I think they wanted to know more about Jesus. This knowledge that he was, uh, that he wanted to impart mm -hmm. to the world that, that they were astonished at. Okay. I like that. Th think of Jesus' words. I mean, here, here's a group of people who didn't grow up in Israel. Didn't, you know, they didn't live there, didn't work there. They come from the outside, they come in, they've heard about Jesus, maybe through reputation, maybe they heard about the miracles, uh, maybe they heard uh, about, you know, the, the week before the, the, the triumphal uh, procession. Uh, maybe they've heard these things, and, and of course, it gets their attention. What I find so significant about this is that Jesus said, look, just come. Whosoever will may come. Uh, I, I don't care if you're a Jew living in Jerusalem or you're a Jew uh, living over in Athens. I don't care. I just want everybody to come. And, and, and the invitation, and, and I want to be clear on this and, and understand, I love the Advent Church. I love Nepean. I love Carlton Place. And yet the invitation by Jesus Christ is not to come to Jerusalem. It's not to come to Nepean or Washington, D.C., where our headquarters are, or to come to Carlton Place. The invitation of the gospel is not to come to church. It's to come to Jesus, Amen. who is the head of our church. Amen. And, and so maybe the question, and, and I asked this a little earlier, and again, in no way, shape, or form does this diminish the role of the church. 
I, I think it actually adds to the mission of the church. I think it adds to the importance of the church. Uh, and that is, what would people find? And, and a little rhetorical, okay? But I, I want us to ask at both Nepean and Carlton Place, when people come to our church, what do they find? And maybe more importantly, the question should be, what do we want them to find? Well, so what would you find when you come to church and what do we want and what do we want them to find? What would they find? Do the two, are the two meshed? Do they, are they working well together? Love. Love? Yeah. I'm happy to hear that's, 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 that's somebody's experience. Amen. God's love. Yes, Hallie. I believe when people come to Nepean, the first thing, no exception to the rule, that's my observations, that they see a people that are warm and loving and open, mm. extended arms to them. Okay. I think and that's the first thing anybody sees. And they receive it. So they feel it. Mm -hmm. But I think what we need on a continuity basis is to show the true love of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts? Debbie is writing on Facebook. Uh, so Hallie said God's love, and Debbie says, and the truth. Amen. Absolutely. I'd want him to find love. I'd want him to find God's love and, and truth. Absolutely. W what else would they find? Would we want them to find? I think what they want to see, Pastor, is they want to see the gospel in in actually practic practical mm. gospel, not mm. just verbal. <clears throat> verbal, a lot of people can be taken in by verbal, but yes. when they see the, the 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 living part of it, yeah, I think mm. they that's 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 they're astonished to see the living part because when we put on the righteousness of Christ, they yes. the light will attract. Mm. And and I think and I think it's it, the light and the light because if you're saying you love somebody, it, it it's much it has more of a bigger impact than when you give when you give them a hug right you know if you tell your kids i love you but you don't hug them and you don't really express it um they can go like my dad says he loves me but he never shows it really to me mm. so they wanted more practical the way jesus did it mm -hmm. uh, absolutely and, and 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 it's meaningless um if if it's not actually lived out in your life and i love the thought of there's love, there's truth, mm -hmm. and these things have to come together. I, I mean, what you'll also find when you come to our church uh, is that you'll find people who, for whom the health message and diet is important. Um, mm -hmm. There are going to be people focused on prophecy and end time events, um, or there's people who are, um, it's community services and, and programs, and um, you might encounter some people who are debating and fighting over lifestyle issues or um and, and and you'll find all of this stuff what you'll find is people what what i want people to find is jesus mm -hmm. and and all these other things are important I'm, I'm, i mean jesus is i mean talk about truth jesus is in the sabbath bible prophecies he's he's in every aspect of our life but i want to find not just people who are focused on diet, but people who, who are focused on our, our bodies or our temple that I want connected to Jesus. I, I come to church on the Sabbath because Jesus is the Lord of the Sabbath. I want Jesus flowing in and through everything we do mm -hmm. so, so that that righteousness we receive from him and the truths that follow are going to be shining so brightly because Jesus is reflected in everything. Mm -hmm. And Jesus is reflected in our touch, in our hugs, um, in our community programs, what we preach from the front. Wednesday, you know, Wednesday night encounter Bible study. I, I want Jesus reflected in everything we do. Um, Debbie is writing the truth that he loves us, wants us, forgives us. Uh, yes, we see God's love in action. It is life giving. And, and so um, again, the Greeks came to see Jesus, and then Jesus goes, lift me up. Just, just lift me up, and I'm going to do the attracting. And, and I think that the best way to lift Christ up 
is through a life that reflects both his character of love and his nature of righteousness. Okay, so we get into this story, and there's all sorts of different people reacting to Jesus in different ways. What was the difference between the Greeks and the Pharisees? Because John wants to make a very powerful point here because he understands the attitude of the Pharisees towards people who are not Pharisees and people who aren't Jerusalem Jews. What, 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 what point is, what's the difference here? What point is, do you think John's trying to make? I don't know. You're asking the question, uh, what was the difference between the Pharisees mm, yes. and the, uh, the Pharisees, uh, you know what, they consider themselves uh, spiritually, spiritual leaders. They consider mm. themselves, uh, they pride themselves in spirituality, uh, whereas the Greeks um, were not really Jews. They were coming to to learn they were very educated people that more and more about jesus and this knowledge that he was willing to impart uh the pharisees were stuck with their tradition and they felt that if you went contrary to their uh tradition uh that you were stepping on toes and that you were bringing in a new doctrine that was very offensive on the other hand the greeks wanted to learn more so you have an inquisitive mind and you have another mind that is set in their ways. And I don't care if you come with a new thing. We got to stick with the old, uh, the old way, the, thing, the, yeah. way, thing, the way things are. Um, and if you, even if it's good, uh, I kind of like it, but I, I, I'm still going to stick with the old way. You know what I mean? I <laughs> you know hear you. I mean? Yes. So, so, but the Greeks, they wanted to know more. They saw a new, a new, uh, a new way of, expressing because jesus put a lot of things uh that we would say uh very roughly jesus put it in a very nice way but it's mm. the same and the greeks were like fascinated at this kind of a knowledge and they were like hmm, i never thought about it this way and 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 they 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 would read a lot so when jesus saw that these guys were coming he goes like you know what i can see what the future will bring with the inquisitive mind who wants to know more about who God really mm. is. Okay. Okay. Um, I, and, and, and agree with all of that. I also think back to last week and, and maybe I, I, if you have your Bibles open there, you'll notice that from last week in verse 19, the Pharisees are angry at the scene. It's the triumphal entry. They're angry. They're frustrated. And, and they, they look at Jesus and they're like, you see that you are not doing any good. Look, the world has gone after him. And, and the difference is, is that, you know, they actually got this right. The world was going after Jesus when, in fact, it should have been the Pharisees who first and foremost should have seen Jesus for who he is. I mean, the Greeks had heard about him and were responding to him. The Pharisees experienced Jesus firsthand. The Greeks experienced Jesus through other people. The Pharisees had experienced him firsthand. And what was so damning, and, 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 and this is part of you know, the, you know, the unpardonable sin. And that is to see God for who he is and say, that's not what I want. Now, now that I've experienced God and I've seen God, I've decided I don't want God. There's no coming back from that. And, and so this is where the, the Pharisees are. We, we, the, the, they're supposed to have been the teachers of God, the, the, the instructors on who God is. And when they finally encountered God, they didn't want him. Jesus makes an interesting statement. The Greeks show up and, and Jesus says, um, now the time has come for the son of man to enter into his glory. What does Jesus mean by that? Now the time has come. We, we've seen him multiple times in other places say, no, no, my time is not here. So what, what, what's, what's going on here? What, what, what now tells us that, you know, the time has come? 
uh, hour, to enter into his glory. What glory? Uh, questions. The hour of his suffering has come. Now, Carolyn, I'm, I'm going to hold you there for a second and go, but what's so mm -hmm. glorifying or so glorious about suffering? And, and I, I'm, you know, somebody might say, but I don't see any glory in suffering or dying on a cross. Like, like glory, I mean, you're dying in battle or, you know, uh, I, 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 what, what's so, what's, how, how are you entering into glory when you're literally going to be actually shamed? Yeah. But he's going to, he's going to be our redeemer and save us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Save his creatures. Okay. okay. From total destruction. Yeah. Okay. And because Jesus is that is totally different to any other death that anybody may have done for anyone, if that ever happened, Jesus' death was as the savior of the world. Mm -hmm. And without his dying on the cross, there'd be no soul saved for the king for the kingdom. That's right. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Because he knows the end from the beginning. Mm. He knows that that is the most or should be the most highlighted moment in the history mm. of the human existence. The cross, it's the, the highlighted point that everyone should be looking at and, and have the, the faith and knowing that my price has been paid. We okay. should have a cross in every church. He is the Lamb of God that is our sacrifice. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any it other thoughts? All the all the um feast days pointed towards Jesus' death and the resurrection. He had the power of the death. Mm -hmm. Unique from anyone else. No one else. No one else had the power of death. So it's proved that that he is God. So he, he must die and then be resurrected on the third day to so show the people I was I am really God. All right. Mm. And the Pharisees. Love the praise of men more than they want the praise of God. That's why they didn't want to believe in him. They knew he was God, but they didn't want to give up the power that they had. So they say he must die to, and reclaim us to redeem us. Okay. I think, Pastor, when mm -hmm. you think about the Son of Man being glorified, I think what we're thinking about is that, um, from my perspective, is that when Moses went into the mountain and he said, God, show me your glory. Yes. And, and the God, God demonstrated his goodness, mm. the fruit of the spirit. So the glory and the name and the character of God is the same thing. So, ah. when, so when the glory was going to be uh, manifested here, it was going to let the world know, because Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men. So the, the character of God was going to be lifted up above the earth. Mm. So the whole world could see the 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 <laughs> How should I say, like the beam of a of a um, of a lighthouse in a in a on a dark night, shining out. This light flashes. So mm -hmm. when this light flashes, you can go like, "What is that thing on that hill?" So it would. This glory would be so bright. It would it would suck the attention of all all who wanted to see what was this light really about. And then once they once they get caught like a fly to the light. Then they will be trapped into the into the character of love, and they will be stunned mm. with this love because the the we were told that throughout eternity we will be studying about this character of Christ. Yes, and when you're attracted to the glory of God, you will be fascinated by this love yeah. as you closer and closer to the light. It would yes. it it would it would capture your imagination that it will suck you in yeah. and suck your knowledge in that. Yeah. more you go towards it is the more you will learn and and Amen. that 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 is what the manifestation really was about <clears throat> that's what he was trying to let the world know that if you see me lifted up mm. then you really understand who really i am you're going to see my love really demonstrated that you've never seen a love like this before Amen. and and, and and i love all of this mm -hmm. This is one of the reasons why um, when we start a new book, I, I say it's important to ask several questions. Like who's writing? Who are they writing to? 
Why are they writing this? And, and John wrote this. He wrote John, the Gospel of John, to say, Jesus is God. Mm-hmm. And, and, and Jesus' point in John is, let me show you who God is. So much so that when we get to 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, John moves from Jesus is God to let me tell you what God's character is like. And John completely goes, God is love. Mm-hmm. That's what John walked away with. And, and he wants us to walk away with that same idea. God is love. And as we look at this in light of the great controversy, where Satan attacks the character of God. This is, there's this war between Christ and Satan, and what's at stake is the character of God. It, 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 this, this war gets played out a little, somewhat in the book of Job, where, where Satan's actual argument in the book of Job is, God, you're wrong about Job's character. And if you can be wrong about Job, you can be wrong about me. <laughs> and, 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 and so God hangs his character and reputation on a man who reveals who God is, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Mm-hmm. Right? God stakes his character and reputation on a man. This time, globally, universally, he's hanging his reputation on Jesus, who is the full revelation of who God is. Mm-hmm. And God goes, now you really want to see what I'm like? Yeah, you think you think you think Job loved me through boils and and loss and pain and and wait until you get a load of my son who's going to bear the cross mm. and go your will not mine. Mm. Though he slay me, your will not mine. Yeah. And, and 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 this glory that Christ is going to reveal is his character of love for all humanity. Mm-hmm. Now the connection becomes, and I was going to ask this, and we just spoke to it, but let's let's really hone in on it. So what is the connection between Christ's glory and the glory of the Father? Do you see the connection now? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because in verse 27, Jesus says, Father, save me from this hour. But for this course came I into the into this hour, and that's what you just pointed out, Pastor. Mm-hmm. Not 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 Jesus' will, but his father's will be done. And then in verse 28, he says, Father, glorify thy name. Then God answered from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. And that is through his son Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Okay. Pastor, I uh, when Sarah read that text there, I wanted to to say when God speaks love towards us because He's a God of love. Mm. When God speaks love towards us, there is thunder and lightning and the earth shakes. Mm. Yeah. We can't feel that love. You know? Can you imagine that? When God, this is He said here. You know, the Father said, yes. this, and I will, and I have. A, both glorified it and i will glorify it that's the voice of the father so when he speaks now yeah there's thunder yes there's thunder and an er- an earthquake the earth is shaking and moving so this is when god speaks love towards us we can't handle that love sure and and you know what and and, and here's and and this is this goes back to when god says to moses look i can't even show you my glory mm. uh and 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 th- and this is the difference between the glory of God and the sin of humanity. The closer you get to God, the more you see yourself. And, and, and in, in this exchange, um, we, we, we realize that, that sinful human beings can't come into the presence of an unfiltered God. Which is why God said, you can't even look at the ark when my glory is on it. You certainly can't touch it. I, I stand on a mountain. You can't even touch the mountain. And the thing is, is that sin has so separated us from God mm-hmm. that we even have a hard time listening to his voice. Mm-hmm. You know, Moses, you talk to God. And, and, and so here, here we have this, this God who's filled with glory and goodness. And, but here's the connection between the two that I really wanted to focus in on. And that is, the glory of one is the glory of other. Mm-hmm. 
of the other. And then when you bring glory to one, you automatically bring glory to the other because these two are one. Right, which is so when people come along and they try to argue that that Jesus was a created son and God gave him an elevated status, notice that Jesus is saying here, anytime you glorify me, you glorify the Father, and you can't glorify the Father without glorifying me. Mm -hmm. If the two aren't equal, Mm -hmm. then you could that statement would not be true. Mm -hmm. And and Jesus, Jesus is like. And, and, and this is why, you know, we say that, you know, in the Trinity, <clears throat> the implications of this are huge. And I'm hoping that as we get to the cross, you'll understand what I'm about to say. And that is when you glorify one, you glorify the others. Mm-hmm. You pray to one, you pray to the others. Yes. Now, the implications of that are what happens when you crucify one. Crucify the other. Mm-hmm. Which is why we're told the father was in Christ mm-hmm. at the cross. And the implications of that are going to be huge when we get there. And I hope you follow us to Mm -hmm. the cross. And this is why um, I I shared one of my messages, what I want you to do as we get closer to the cross. I I, I want people to go home. I want you to read through each gospel, read the chapters leading from the triumphal entry. It's in all four gospels right up to the cross. And in each chapter, in each gospel, ask yourself, what is this telling you about who God is? Because Jesus is trying to scream out, this is the glory of God. I'm trying to reveal it to you in everything I do. Raise somebody from the dead so you can see the glory of the Father, but I too will be glorified. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, all judgment is given to me, um, but, but, uh, you know, I'm going to honor my Father through that judgment. Um, and, And he says, you know, Father, the hours come. Now glorify your son that I may glorify you. Because the connection that John has been trying to make the entire time is that Jesus is God. And you people don't get that when you sacrifice, you sacrifice to, to like, like Jesus is the God of our nation. And you people, you missed it. The Greeks are getting it. Right. The our, our, our cousins, the Samaritans were getting it. Even the Romans at the cross get it. What's wrong with mm-hmm. because God lived among us mm-hmm. and, and and look at what we did. We did his own did not receive him. But the rest of the world is, which is why Jesus said, look, if I had done this in Sodom and Gomorrah. They'd have been saved. <laughs> they they would like the whole whole city would have been converted if they'd have experienced God the way you have experienced God. I think, Pastor, what they were looking for, they were looking for a rich Solomon, mm. a, guy, mm. a guy who would come with a fancy car and mm-hmm. smelling clean clothes and big money and make them as keepers of the church. You know, the big bosses. Yeah. Of- and, and 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 because they were in for the money, they weren't in for the for the real thing. They were they were in for the favoritism. They were in for the hey brother, you know. They were in for the perks and the high places. Jesus said they love the high seats. They love the reward. They love to be called a rabbi. Mm, they yeah. they love the the promotion. <laughs> <laughs> no, you can you can get caught up with it, you know. Sure, you can. I, as a spiritual leader, you know, you can re- you can really get caught up in this thing and you can become so full of yourself that you forgot the whole you, f- you forgot the whole calling what you were called for. Mm-hmm. And, and unfortunately, they got caught up with it. Yeah, absolutely. There were a couple of things I wanted to take away from this before I ask my next questions. And, and you know, in, in this passage here uh, and these passages so far, I've, I've learned that there is a trinity. Yeah. That, that there is the, you know, when, when, you know, this one God only movement, yeah, you got a problem. And, and that problem is Jesus and Jesus who teaches there's the Holy spirit. Um, and, and, and again, that, that when you bring glory to one, you bring glory to them all because mm-hmm. these three are one and they are God. Mm-hmm. And, and the ultimate goal of our life is to bring glory to God. Mm-hmm. The question becomes, in what ways do we bring 
glory to God? How, how do we in our thoughts, in our life, in a rhetorical question, but I want you to think about this and pray through this this week. In what ways can you bring glory to God through what you say, who you touch, how you interact, how you live your life? Because when people encounter us, what version or flavor of God do they encounter? Okay, um, we're time's running out, and there's this crazy verse that that I titled this on, and it's verse 25. Let me read it for you. He who loves his life loses it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it to life eternal. Now, I, I, I've, I've got to ask, I mean, because this is not a popular sermon. Uh, I mean, imagine what would happen if I, you know, came up and said, hate yourself. That's my sermon title this week. Hate yourself. Uh, I'm going to get some odd looks, some serious questions about this. Uh, I wanted to ask two questions in relation to the verse. What does it mean to love your life? What's Jesus talking about when it says, you know, to love your life? What was he getting? I thought it was okay to love yourself. I mean, how often have we heard you can't love others if you don't love yourself? So what's wrong with the whole loving yourself thing? What's he getting at here? The selfish. Selfishness? But one's own ego. And life, to me, it's more like a um, lifestyle. Mm. If we love what we have here, we don't, we don't look forward to what can be after. So we our goal should be what is going to be in heaven and how we should prepare for there. And what we have here at this moment is just a stepping stone and just to do God's will and teach mm -hmm. others. Right. And uh, our biggest testimony at this moment right now is to show faith It's every in everything that is going on right now, the uncertainty of this life, the worries that people have, who is scared from viruses, who is scared for jobs, mm -hmm. to show that we trust God. And we don't worry about our life here because we have another life to look forward to. Mm -hmm. So it's not that we hate our life here, that's what I want to say, but our goal should be the life eternal. Okay. Because in, this, in the next, as she was saying, he who hates his life in this world, in this world. We're world, here. yes. It's a the world government. of trials. It's a world of trouble. Yeah. And we're only strangers here. It's only for a temporary mm -hmm. time. Whereas in the next, if we love Jesus, and have that relationship with him, it will be eternally. Mm -hmm. It's for okay. eternity. It's just, it's not, even if we live a hundred years, it's not very long on this planet. Mm -hmm. You know, eternity is just another something that we can't even comprehend. Okay. But I think Jesus answers the question in part in verse 26. When he's, and, and Boreana and, and, um, and Carolyn actually touched on it. Because he says, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And he said, where mm. I am, there you also my servant shall be. Mm -hmm. And he further says, if any man serve him, my father will honor him. Mm -hmm. I believe Jesus mm -hmm. answered the question in part in verse 26. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, any other thoughts? Yeah, I think, I think what it's saying is that... Um, if you if you love God, right? Uh, Jesus, had, I, I think it's one of the biggest signs I've seen downtown in Ottawa at the um, where the city of Ottawa is. Uh, there's a big engraved sign there. It says, "Greater love have no man than he laid down his life for his friend." Mm. And it has those firefighters in memorial. It's a memorial thing there, and I and I think that's what the text really is about. If you um, Serving God is not just uh, being like a Pharisee, serving God. And I'm, you know, like when you think about the Good Samaritan story, you know, I'm on my, I'm on business to God. Let somebody will take care of that guy that who just got beat up there. You know what I mean? Right. I get caught up with the service of God and you actually don't really care about people. So I think what happened at, uh, in order for you to be a 
servants of God, you have to lay down your life for people. If you're not willing uh-huh. to die for people, um, then don't be a witness because Jesus was trying to show that he was willing to even die for the, for those who were going to persecute him. And mm. as, as Christian, when you, when you really think about it as Christians, are we really to tread that real path to Calvary that even though people will persecute you and abuse you, are you willing to be like Jesus to say, father, forgive them for they know not where to do it. Mm. You don't go with the Holy spirit. And that's, that's what we read in the book of acts. When we see, the deacon Stephen getting stoned that he 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 doesn't love his life anymore he's willing to die for the greater good and in the process of getting stoned and persecuted he is even willing to forgive that that kind of a demonstration of of uh fellowship with the father and the glory of god being filled in your heart i think that's what it that i think that's Mm. the example of Acts chapter seven is, is really what that text is about. Okay. I, I, I love all of it. Um, I, I, I start with Jay's thought in terms of selfishness or living for self. Um, I mean, you, you might've heard this saying, he who, you know, uh, he who has the most toys wins, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, loving your life is about, uh, and again, going back to the Jews who lived for what's in it for me. And, and this is about in part, Jesus is, you know, he's talking about, um, you know what, there's a cost to following Jesus. And that cost, especially back then, was tied, could be tied to your survival, your income, your life, uh, your ability to buy or sell or even be a free citizen in your country. And we know that's going to happen down the road where you won't be able to buy or sell. You won't be able to work. They'll throw us in jail. We could even lose our life. And Jesus goes... If, if your standard of what is um, what you love and what you're going to cling to is, is survival of the fittest, number one, what's in it for me, you're going to lose your life. You're going to lose your soul. So if you're in it for uno, numero me, <laughs> uh, Jesus is like, yeah, you, you know what? Yeah, you, you think of the guy who built the barns. Uh, and Jesus goes, yeah, the guy had it all. And God goes, yeah, but tonight you're going to die and you're lost, right? You had everything by, by the world standard. And this is the clue here. By the world standard of what love is, you had it all. You loved money. You loved wealth. You loved possessions. You loved comfort. You loved applause. You loved your life. But your soul was, it's, it's gone. Okay. What good does that do you? So again, I'm looking at the time. And you got to ask, so what does it mean to hate your life in this world? Um, again, that always seems to go against um, our, our instincts towards healthy self-esteem, um, which we do believe in. We believe in healthy self-esteem. God loves you. You're the apple of his eye. You're the head, not the tail. You are his bride, the part of the royal priesthood. But it, so what is he talking about? Like, how would you explain that? The hatred of what's surrounding you, not not yourself, the hatred uh, of you, but of what is happening to others, um, the world, the world mm-hmm. in general. Okay. We we should, bring up, sorry, Boriana, go ahead. Sorry. We shouldn't have life in this world. We shouldn't be connected with the world. That's what I understand. What the world loves, we should hate. Mm. But that doesn't mean that we should hate ourselves because God created us. We are special. We are, mm. we are priesthood. We cannot uh, forget where we came from, but we shouldn't love the world and have life in that world because we serve God and our life should be in God. Mm-hmm. It's okay. I, want to, I want to bring it home to myself to say that I should hate the sin that is in me. Mm. Um, um, When I think of who I was to who I am now, it does make me shudder to think that I could have brought my Jesus to so much shame. Mm -hmm. So I hate that part of me. I hate that life because it is not what Jesus wants. 
So that's what I'm thinking. And I, if I bring it home to me, yeah, but all about I hate it. that life yeah. because mm. I hate the sinning in that life. So, okay, Jay, I think you were trying to say something. Uh, no, uh, the sin, yeah, uh, um, uh, Sarah uh, touched base on it. Uh, the sin, like, because if you, um, you love, uh, you know, it's sitting right here, um, he that hates his life in this world, because we're, we're so caught up in, in like the Facebook lives, the, you know, the fakeness of this life, where a lot of it around the world is 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 people who are are, are not true uh, to themselves and who they are and and uh, are far away from uh, yeah. God and reality of what this uh, this place re should represent. That's what I feel that the sins, uh, hating the sins of this world, yeah. and yeah. and myself for being in this, you know, and and you know, maybe loving this life a little bit here and there, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, gotta go take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> Edward, were you wanting to say something? I think pastor, you know what, when I read the uh, great controversy, I think one of the, the biggest problems would be is that if you decided to live a Christian life mm -hmm. and uh, you're, you're doing everything nice, you're a nice guy, you're courteous, you're kind. Um, if you look at the life of Stephen, and going back to the life of Stephen again, he was that kind of a person looking out to the business of the church. Mm -hmm. But then once he started to open his mouth, that, that irritated people. And as, as a Christian, you just can't only live the life. You have to speak the words of God. When Jesus spoke the words of God, it irritated the Pharisees or it irritated the devil. And when you start to talk truth, mm. truth will be very offensive for people who love sin. Yeah. And, 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 and once truth starts to shine, it's like a bright light when Moses <laughs> came down from the mountain. Oh, cover your face, brother. It's too bright. We, we can't handle it. So truth becomes very offensive, not only in action, but truth has to be coming out from the words i love your sermon one time when you said after you keep talking god says you know what let me take over and yeah. talk through you you remember that pastor i do i do remember that bad? <laughs> yep. well once the holy spirit starts to speak through you this become offensive and mm. this it means that self has died because if self is going to live then holy spirit is suppressed yeah self self gets to talk Mm. But yeah. if self has died, Holy Spirit takes over. Amen. And and that becomes irritating to whoever loves sin. Mm. And and I and I love this. And and to wrap up and to conclude, and wonderful thoughts, everybody. Uh, I, I just loving tonight's study. I I thank you all so much. In one of my other messages, I I, I was talking about how do you know you're converted? How do you know you've died to self? And I ask this question, is Jesus central to everything you do? Like, do you ask yourself when you're about to say something or do something, do you ask, how is this going to impact my relationship with Jesus? Who comes first, you or Christ? This is really what Christ is asking here, is he's asking this question, uh, really he's, he's, he's coming down to, is it going to be you or is it going to me? Who's going to be central to your life? And if you love your life and you are central to your life and everything you do is about you, you're going to lose your life. But if you hate, if you, if you put to death that part of your life and you live with this idea, is Jesus central to everything you do? then his glory and his righteousness and his love are eventually going to shine through you because you're not only going to ask, how is this going to impact my relationship with Jesus? You're going to start asking, how does this impact other people's relationship with Jesus? Because I'm going to be God's greatest sermon in this world. And we do that by, by putting Jesus and lifting Jesus up over ourselves. Paul said, I don't care about anything. My, my greatest topic is Jesus Christ and him crucified. I brag in that, you know, in the cross alone. Mm -hmm. And this is, 
why we're asked to hate our lives. Not, not, not to hate ourselves, but to hate this idea of I come first when mm -hmm. God put us first. Mm -hmm. and, and, and this is what God has asked. God is saying, look, I put you first. I loved you. I gave you my son. Jesus is like, I put you first. And love in God's kingdom is really about living your life in such a way that you bless the people around you. Amen. And that's how God's character of love is, is, is shines forth in this world. And that kind of love only exists when you're able to say, not I, but Christ. Amen. And that's what hating your life is about. It's about putting Christ and other people ahead of yourself so much so your life is, how, do, how, how does this impact my relationship with Christ? And how can I impact your relationship with Christ? Mm -hmm. And when we do this, we ultimately bring glory to the Father. When we make him central to our life, we are told in scripture, uh, th here we are, our faith is, is, is great because even though we haven't seen God, we live for his glory, mm -hmm. right? In contrast to Satan and his angels who knew God, lived with God, were in the presence of God mm -hmm. and left God. Here we have the Pharisees who were in the presence of God. And Jesus mm -hmm. goes, how much more blessed are they? who haven't seen, but they believe mm -hmm. and they live for the glory of God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is why we hate our life because we are dedicated mm -hmm. to living for the glory of a God mm -hmm. who's changed our lives. And if we, if God has changed your life and you haven't seen him yet, imagine what it's going to be like when you truly encounter him oh. at the second coming. Wow. Mm -hmm. Like, wow, I am looking forward to that day. Amen. Folks, that is our time is up. That is our Bible study for tonight. I love the book of John. And again, wow, thank you for the insights and for the sharing. I love what I learned from you. Uh, and, and again, I've just, my heart is filled with a love for Christ and, and your love for Christ. Thank you for that. Amen. Before we go, do we have any prayer requests tonight? Um, any any praises, anything you just uh, want us to to pray about? I know we've been praying for Galena. Uh, Pastor, one of my friends uh, recommended prayer. Uh, sorry, not recommended, but requested prayer. <laughs> okay. His name is uh, Daniel. Daniel. He, he said, please ask the church to pray for Daniel. Okay, we will pray for Daniel. Yeah. Absolutely. I have a praise. Um, my brother had his CAT scan results and they were excellent. Amen. Oh, uh, amen. All the kidney stones are so small now you can hardly see them. <laughs> amen. <laughs> Wonderful. I know a little something uh, uh, about that. <laughs> um, Hallie is writing on Facebook. I would like to pray for my sister, Kayla. She's out of the hospital, but going for tests on her heart. And also a co-worker is having family issues and really needs prayer. So for Kayla and the, uh, the, the, the friend uh, with the family issues, uh, folks, and any others? For Alan. For Alan. Alan. Pat has said that he's not out of the woods yet. He's back in the hospital. Okay. Pat's and, Alan. And um, Janet, who's helped um, needs uh, prayer. Okay. And again, we know that God hears all these prayer requests. Anything else? We can keep praying for Gamal. Is that her name? Gamal? The, the Russian Gal name. Galina. Galina, thank you. Think Galilee, Galina. Galina. Uh, <laughs> so, so many names. I, I also want to pray for our church family, for a spirit of peace. You know, there are times when, when family is family, and sometimes we can rub on each other, and we rub off, and we rub on, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's, it's a good, and sometimes it's, it's, uh, it can be challenging. And I want to pray for relationships in our church, because when people come to church, I want them to see a group of people loving Jesus and loving on each other, like yeah. Jesus asked us to. And I, I want that for Nepean, absolutely. Um, mm -hmm. Folks, also... Um, want to pray. I, I know that this year uh, was the year that my sermon focus was on 
um, you know, getting closer to Jesus. And I want this to be the year that we're closer to Jesus. And now I feel impressed to, in the coming year to talk about getting ready for Jesus and living like Jesus. And um, just want to pray through that as well. Um, I know it's a couple of months away, but sometimes it just goes like that. Where we can so, start praying for revival um, in, within ourselves and our, and our church. And, and that's what this year was about, you know, yeah. getting closer to Christ. I mean, that's what revival is all about. As I get closer to Christ, I'm transformed by him. Yes. Folks, let's close with a word of prayer. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, Lord, you have heard our prayer requests tonight. We have been praying for Kayla and family and friends and we're praying for Galena. Um, Edward has a friend, Daniel, who's asked for prayer. And we think of Alan. Lord, we think of other people in our lives who struggle with either finances or family issues, um, people wrestling with um, parenting, life decisions, uh, people wrestling with addictions, or somebody's out there, Lord, wrestling with a character issue or wanting victory over some sin or even, Lord, just a resolution on some problem in life. And, Lord, all of these things we come to you with because mm -hmm. we know that you love us. This is mm -hmm. where we talk about God's glory, this, this amazing love that you have for each of us. And, Lord, we know that you answer prayers because you're a God of love. And, and you do what is best for us, which is why we believe you will cause all things to work together to those that love you. Amen. And we're praying, Lord, that you would work all things out for the good, according to your will. Mm. We pray for our church family, Lord, we would see Jesus. We would be close to Jesus. Mm. When people come to Nepean or Carlton Place, Lord, or, or whatever church, you know, we have a lot of people who are going to be watching this, whatever church it is, Lord, when people come to an Advent church, an Adventist church, we want them to find Jesus and a group of people in love with Jesus. Mm. Lord, the times in which we live are prophetic. Yes. And they are, Lord, there, there's so much that could happen now in rapid succession. Yeah. And we see it coming. The dominoes are set up. Mm -hmm. and, and Lord, we know that Christ is, is like on the threshold. Yes. And Lord, we would be ready. Yeah. And so we pray that Christ, you would return soon, mm -hmm. that you would find us ready, mm -hmm. serving, faithful, reflecting mm -hmm. your love and your glory, your gospel, your truth in this world. Mm -hmm. Lord Jesus, come, come quickly. Yeah. We love you. And we're looking forward to seeing you in mm -hmm. your name. Amen. 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 Folks, next week we are in chapter 13. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, you all take care. God bless. Thank you for coming out and being a part of the study. And, uh, and a happy Thanksgiving to you all. There's lots to be thankful for. Oh, yeah. And I'm thankful for all of you. Amen. Take care and have a good night, everybody. Night, night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Elsa. <laughs> Good night.